Chapter 5 And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger. So the baby was born in the cold, unfriendly night, in a cave cut in the side of a hill, in a bed of straw, in a stable. In Bethlehem, when you asked to see the place where Christ was born, you were taken to a little rock-bound room. There is a big stone church built above it now, with great, high, beautiful pillars and altars with gold and silver and precious stones, but people who go there now never pay much attention to that. They hurry through the church and take little candles in their hands and go down a flight of narrow, twisting stone stairs worn smooth by the feet of saints and sinners and scholars and common folks into the little rock cave underneath the floor of the church. They stand there, hushed, some of them with big tears streaming down their cheeks, and they look down at the big golden star set in the floor to mark the place where the manger was, where he was born. Princes and paupers come, high and low, good and bad, just to stand for a few minutes where the innkeeper tried to turn Joseph and Mary and the baby away. They come into the place through a door that's only four feet high, so low that they would have to bow to get through it. No matter who or what they are, they bow as they approach the manger. You stand there, and all the world stands still around you, and you hear nothing and see nothing but the baby in the feeding box where the oxen came to eat. And if you've got a heart, it breaks. That's Christmas to me, standing at the manger. It was a stable, yes, a mean place for a baby to be born, a mean place even for animals. It wasn't nearly as fine a stable as Trigger has. It wasn't the light, shining place the artists have painted. It was a dark, damp hole in the ground. Here he was born. You don't like it? You think the Son of God should have been born in a palace or at least in a place where there wasn't any dirt or darkness? But that wouldn't have been right, because God was sending his Son into a world that was a filthy stable, a world dark with pain and hatred and dirty with sin. It was right for him to be born here, for he had come to make men clean and to bring a light into the world that would drive away the darkness in men's minds. I'm no theologian, and I haven't had an education in theology, and I know this explanation of why he came may not please all the theologians, but that's the way it looks to me. I can't put it in fancy language, but I can say that he brought light and peace and something new and clean and fine into my life, and that's all the theology I need. Some of the highbrows in Jerusalem got mad at him once because he sat down with a lot of lowbrow sinners and outcasts that the best people just didn't associate with. They criticized him for that. He turned on them and told them he had come to help people like this, and not the best people who were so proud and self-righteous that they thought they didn't need any help. Some of his best friends were sinners. He came to get them out of the stable.